Hey guys, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Before we get going, a couple things. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Also, shout out David Freiberger, thank you very much. Very cool F-bomb shirt. But let's talk about dyno testing. Let's talk about bolt-ons versus boosts. Which one of those is more effective for adding power? Well, there's only one way to find out. We got to do both individually and then as a pair. Check it out. Okay, guys, let's take a look at a very cool test. And this is the kind of dyno test I live for. There's so many changes here. There's so much good stuff and so much information and so many different things to compare and so many different ways to compare them. But let's jump right in and find out a correlation between <laughs> bolt-ons versus boost. And this was on a 347, basically a stroker version of a 5-liter Ford. And what we did was run this thing NA with Aww. basically the stock heads, the stock E7TE heads, the stock camshaft. It was a stroker flat top piston with valve reliefs because we would eventually put a, a pretty good sized camshaft in this. We would also put ported heads and an intake manifold on it. But what we did was ran this thing with a stock head, stock cam, a GT40 intake, long tube headers on the 347. And then we ran it with boost. And then I changed and upgraded the heads, cam, and intake. And then I also ran that with boost. So lots and lots of good stuff here. But it gives us a, a, a good comparison between the gains offered by the NA upgrades and then the gains just offered by Boost on the stock upgrade. So let's jump right in and take a look at that. This was run, R347 was run with a, as I said, GT40 65 millimeter throttle body, stock E7TE heads and stock HO camshaft with long tube headers. The 347 produced 306 horsepower and depending on where you want to measure 385 or 90 foot pounds of torque, what would happen is this curve would have rolled over a little bit. The 400 number is probably an anomaly. That's just the load in point. So had I loaded this thing down at 2000 or 2500, we would have saw where the real torque per torque curve was but since we're going to be looking at the higher side of this both with a centrifugal blower and after we do the bolt-ons we're just going to call it 385 to 90-ish foot-pounds of torque but here's what happened when we added boost to this stockish combination it is a 347 but stock heads cam and the gt40 intake manifold here's what happened when we added a vortex to it so we and i'm going to go ahead and move here so you can kind of see this stuff a little bit better but we see when we added boost, the Vortex Supercharger was equipped with a 3.8 inch blower pulley and a 6.75 inch uh, uh, crank pulley, and it was a Vortex S trim. So we ran the blower on this combination. We had a mixture of 91 and 100 octane fuel so that we could run enough timing in this thing and make decent power. This produced the, the pulley combination with this Vortex produced a peak of eight pounds of boost at the top. Down low, it started out about 2.5 or 2.6 pounds of boost down here below 3,500 RPM. And you can see it offered good gains. We ended up making, we went from 306 horsepower to 421 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 461 foot pounds of torque. But the interesting thing is we added the supercharger to the stock combination, which was obviously very restrictive, both in terms of cam timing and obviously cylinder head. But here's what happened when we upgraded those components. We put on a set of RHS uh, ported heads and a bigger, much bigger camshaft, an XFI hydraulic roller camshaft, and an RPM2 intake manifold. So let's check that out and find out how much power we gained from the bolt-on upgrades. Okay, we've seen what happens when we added boost to basically stock heads cam and intake 347 stroker on the 5 liter application and we went from 306 to 421 horsepower but here's what happened when we upgraded the top end of our 347 because obviously it was in need of more head flow, wilder cam timing and a better intake manifold and that's exactly what we supplied. We supplied a set of RHS CNC ported aluminum heads we also supplied a Comp XFI 236 camshaft, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up. And as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than a factory HO cam, which was okay, but not nearly enough to feed a 347, let alone a supercharged 347. And then we replaced the GT40 intake and 65 millimeter throttle body with an Elbrock RPM2 intake manifold and a 75 millimeter throttle body. So I'm going to go ahead and show you 
what happened when we did that upgrade on the naturally aspirated version. And you can see this will get a little bit busy here, but I'm going to make it a lot easier to see. So right now I know that uh, all the colors are the same. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that because that's my version of the soft software. But I'm going to go ahead and label these so you can see the lowest one, obviously, is the stock NA combination. The one that's making the most power up here is the NA version after we put the heads cam and intake manifold on there. And it's making 449 horsepower with the RHS heads, the RPM2 intake manifold, and that XFI camshaft. So you can see our NA combination, our modified NA combination, was now making more than our supercharged combination when it had the stock components. So the modifications NA made more power, not everywhere, as you can see, below 5,000 RPM or 51 or 5,200 RPM, the supercharged combination with the stock heads and cam and GT40 intake made more power and more torque than our modified NA combination. But obviously, <laughs> this begs the question, okay, we've run our uh, 347 with the stock heads, cam, and intake manifold. We've run it with a supercharger with the stock heads, cam, and intake manifold on the 347. We've also run it now with modifications, heads, cam, and intake in NA form, and it's making good power. So the final question is, okay, Richard, that's all well and good. But now what happens if we add boost to our now modified 347? Shouldn't we make even more power? The answer is yes, you should, and you will. And here's what happens. Wah! So here's what happens when you add boost to the modified version. Yeah, look at that, all kinds of power. In fact, it was going way up over 600, made 660 something, 665 horsepower. And I'll, we can show the torque curves too, but basically we see the same kind of thing. We're making a lot more power because now we're adding boost to a modified combination and the boost has come down because the now the amount of flow that the blower is flowing, it's not resisting it because it's not restricted. So what, what we could do is go up in pulley size and make and add even more airflow from the blower. And we're at this kind of level. We only ran at the 63 or 6300 or so. So the power curve is still climbing very dramatically. Now we're getting up into a level where there might be concern about what's going on with the strength of that, of our stock because we just used a production five liter hydraulic roller block for this. So we're getting to a level where we might be starting to be concerned about the block strength in this issue, but it just goes to show you. Running stock heads cam and intake is restrictive. It's restrictive on a 302, but it's even more restrictive on a 347, which we saw from the previous video. If you haven't seen that, please check that out. I posted that yesterday. And it's even more restrictive on the 347. We can just add boost to that, and boost obviously is a good thing. It always makes more power. But if we add heads cam and intake manifold to our NA combination and make it more powerful NA, especially if we make it more powerful than it was with the boost on the stock stuff, Really good things are going to happen when we add boost to that combo. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway in our bolt-ons versus boost? As always, no big surprise. When you have to choose between those two, choose both of them. Make the modifications and put the boost, and obviously you're going to make a lot more power. But let's take a look at a little bit of math here. First of all, when we went from our stock head, stock cam, GT40 intake on the 347, we made 306 horsepower. When we added boost to that with our Vortex supercharger, we improved the power output by 115 horsepower. So 115 horsepower on the side of boost. When we add our modifications to the naturally aspirated combination, when we replace the GT40 intake manifold and the stock heads and the stock camshaft with our RHS heads, our XFI camshaft and our RPM2 intake manifold, and don't forget the 75 millimeter throttle body, we increased the power output Whoa. by 142 horsepower. So win for the bolt-on guys, although, although as we saw, for a lot of the curve, the bolt-on stuff didn't make more power than the boosted combination when we boosted the stock stuff. It made, it made better power through a lot of the curve, but still win in terms of absolute peak power from the modified version. Now, obviously, when we added boost to our modified version, we made the most amount of power. We made 665 horsepower, and that's all good. Here's an interesting thing, and I know you're going to ask, but how is that possible, Richard? We made eight pounds when we ran the supercharger on our stock version. 
We also made eight pounds when we ran the supercharger on our modified version. And I know what you're thinking, Richard, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. You made the motor much more efficient by putting the heads cam and intake manifold on. If you didn't change the blower pulley size, which we didn't, or the crank pulley size, if you didn't change those things, the boost should have come down. Well, it did, and it didn't. It did because when we ran the combination with our modified version, we ran a higher RPM. We ran it all the way out to 6,300 RPM. When we ran our stock version, we only ran that to 5,700 RPM. So we were getting 8 pounds at 5,700 RPM on the stock version, and we were getting 8 pounds at 6,300 RPM on our modified version. If we measured them at the same engine speed of 5,700 RPM, the boost did come down. It came down from 8 pounds down to 6.7 pounds, so we lost 1.3 pounds of boost by doing our modifications and picked up a ton of power. And as a side note on this test, I should have used much bigger injectors because what happened on this combination at 6,300 RPM, even though our power was still climbing rapidly, we just ran out of fuel. 36 pound injectors, even though we had a one-to-one -one reference regulator, was not enough fuel to support this power. Live and learn. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep on testing.